Good evening, everybody. My name is Bubby Craft, and tonight we're building Boko. As you can see here, we have ourselves a Boko, and we have a pretty cool little setup on the inside here. There are, there's just one thing that you need in order to be able to build your Boko, and that's a, another copy of Daisy. So I'm going to give you a second here to build up a second copy of Daisy, or at least get to a certain point that I, um, where you have nothing filled in on your Daisy. And we'll meet back here in just a second. All right, guys. So here we are with our disassembled Daisy. And what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be taking some things off of Daisy just to kind of make it easier to transition from Daisy into Boko. And those things are going to be just as you see what like I'm doing here. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we get rid of the ladders. We want to get rid of every piece of green just because we're going to be changing pretty much everything. And we want to place on a new um, half panel just like so. We're going to just focus from the front and move our way back. So what we want to do is we also want to get rid of those and essentially we're going to just start with placing down a copycat layer on the front of the train control, place down two lime slash local metal, and then just some more layers like so. What we want to do now is we want to click out three times or click out two more times on those layers. So that way you have the uh, face that we're going to, we'll call it face, but it's not really a face. Um, that way you have that uh, set down there. We're going to add in three temporary blocks and we're going to place on three more layers. And on these layers, we're going to click out once from those layers and remove our temporary blocks. Next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and grab a hold of a couple of copycat boards because we are going to want to use those boards and again we're going to place down you know what place down three temporary blocks right there and just keep those on there for a quick second we want to go ahead and place down three boards on either side there, we're going to place down our leaded glass. And in the middle is just going to be our regular glass. And then we're going to come inside and we're going to start building our interior of Boko. Since we now have what we need as far as um, our temporary blocks and everything um, set and whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy down the train controls as well as the seat. And we want to grab a seat since I did not take that one with us. And we want the white loco metal. So we're going to grab just the slashed loco metal. And what we're going to do is we're going to place down two white loco metal. And you might as well just delete these seats as well. You're not going to need them. So we're going to take out the white or put down two white loco metal. And then um, what we want to do is we want to also grab the copycat stairs and we're going to place two copycat stairs. You can fill them with whatever blocks you want. Um, our inside block also does not matter. So we're going to just use some more white local metal. We're going to place a seat down on either side there and then a train controls right in the middle. Um, so another thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is coming outside and we want to grab a copycat board and we're going to place down, oh, you know, what? actually, no, I apologize. We want copycat, uh, copycat, what are they called? No, copycat layer. Yeah. Copycat layer. That's the one. So we want to start placing copycat layers all the way down Boko's ceiling here, Boko's roof, whatever you want to call it. 
this is going to create the shape of our roof. As you can see here, we have our standard roof size, like so, two on either side and three in the middle. Oops. So we're gonna go ahead and fill these in. While I'm doing this, I just wanna take a minute to say thank you all so much for the amazing support that you always provide on the videos that I put out. Your comments are super fun to read and engage with, and I appreciate each and every single one of you. If you like my content, make sure you subscribe um, and dislike the video. If you dislike the video, dislike the video. You know, that's really all there is to it. Um, in the meantime here though, moving back along here to Boko, what we want to do is we want to grab a copycat slice and we're going to place one slice. Oh, you know what? Oh, whoops. We forgot one specific thing. We want to remove these now and we're going to grab the boards, the copycat boards rather. Before we do that, we're going to place the window material into our hotbar so we can now replace those like that because we want the windows sitting in one block. So then we can place one slice there, one slice there, and a slice in the middle, but we want the slice in the middle to be a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to grab the lime slash local metal and just start filling this in. So you can see we've kind of built the almost dome shape on the windows and the leaded glass, the not having leaded glass in the middle also gives a little bit of a dome shape. And I think it's kind of neat. We're going to grab the light gray riveted local metal, place those along the inside there. The uh, in the middle of the roof, I just kind of did a little bit of a design. Nothing special. You can have the interior of your roof look however you want. It is your roof. Do whatever you please. Um, but you want to make sure that it looks a little bit matching just because Boko's roof, albeit it is a little bit of a mess, it is still from the pictures I should I see or I've seen I should say it looks like it's a little bit messy with different bits and bobs but given the limitations of Minecraft and everything there's only so much that you can do but your boko should look like this so far perfect so another thing I'd like to point out too is boko does have a very distinctive coloring difference um, from Daisy and what we want to do to accomplish that is we want to place down two pieces of crimsite on our half panels and then we want to come underneath Boko, remove out those three um, stairs and place down three copycat upside down stairs with whatever color red you choose just to kind of give Boko a distinctive red coloring. We also want to make sure that we grab a different um, bogey to place down for Boko. That bogey is that I used was the triple axle and I went with the, uh, the radial. Okay, once you start filling your Boko in with green, you might be wondering, well wait, how did you get that cool separation there? Well, that's a good question. What I did was I just went inside with a copycat board and I placed a copycat board down on the inside there. And that gives you that little bit of a distinction between the two of them. And it kind of just looks neat. Um, another thing that I did was I used a different variation of slashed local metal um, and um, riveted local metal on the sides of Boko just to create a little bit of a different design for how the side of Boko looks. And I did this 
plated loco metal as well. And I just used the leaded glass windows for the leaded glass. For the grate, I went ahead and did the sides like that. And then I just filled in a bunch of spaces with the slashed local metal all the way down to where the new doors are going to be. And yes, you are going to want to put the copycat doors back one space in this case, just because um, Boko's doors from in, in my interpretation of where they go, Boko's doors do go back just a little bit further. And then I have them so that they're opening out this way, just to kind of give a little bit of a separation as well. I don't know. It's it's up to you, however you want to do it. Um, but we're through a little bit of through a little bit of editing magic, we're gonna put the back exactly the way the front is. I also want to take a second here to call out that the back, when you're doing the back, is just going to be slightly different. We've got the layers here, they only go out twice in, in total, and then the top layer here only goes out once. We're still going to do the same thing where the uh, windows sit in just one, just in case you wanted to change your mind, if you changed your mind and you wanted to put something up on that side. You totally can. It's just something that you can do. Um, the doors, I've made uh, just the riveted local metal, but essentially that's your Boko complete. Make sure you add some ladders and you can change the fuel tanks to be a different color if you want. I believe Bokos were green, um, but I don't know. I kind of like them black just because it contrasts against the amount of green that's already on Boko. Um, but there you go. That is how you build Boko through, um, you know, kind of a little bit of a transition from our Daisy, which we see over here into Boko down here. Honestly, out of the two of them, I feel like Boko looks better just because it's a little boxier. I don't have to worry about the slants or the sloping that Daisy had. Daisy's a little bit more elegant, sure, but you know, it is what it is. Um, something else that you can do if you absolutely wanted to, um, you can come in with some boards, the copycat boards, and you can actually place down boards along the, um, the roof like we did, or you can go through and change those board colors to whatever you want. On my Boko, I did them as green, um, just so that way there's a, a different color roof in there. I don't know, just a thing you can do. It's up to you guys. It's your model. Make it however you want. Um, but I also, I wanted to go ahead and build something else. And let's go ahead and pop over there and do that. All right, in here for take two or part two of our build, we're going to be building Trevor the Traction Engine. One of the cool parts about Trevor here is that you can actually drive him on kind of what looks like a farmland. But you'll notice that we still stop just as if we would on train tracks. And I'm going to show you how to do that. This is a way to make yourself um, any kind of vehicle in Create as well. And that's through the use of what's called a phantom train track. You'll notice when I have it in my hand, I can see the tracks that are laid down. But if I take it out of my hand, it's completely hidden. See, in my hand or in my off hand, remove it from my hand and the tracks disappear. You can actually also relocate Trevor onto regular tracks, have him face whichever direction you want, and uh, yeah, he kind of just does his own thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build a traction engine, and I'm going to show you how, and it's actually really cool. 
So first things first, what we want to do is I want to place down an, a station here and a station here. So I can go ahead and get Trevor into build mode as well as build another one. So that's what I like to do is I build a Trevor or I build the build alongside you guys. All right, what we want to do first is we want to grab ourselves um, a, let's see, we'll start in the back here. We want to grab a casing and we want to set it to the invisible and just place that down. From there, we have our invisible casing and I don't know if you'll be able to see unless I go down here like this. Oh, that's right, casing's up here. So from our casing, what we want to do is Trevor in build mode. We want to grab ourselves a copycat headstock, place that down on either side, and we'll fill that in with the green, brass strapped green local metal. And we want a piece of the same thing, or copper wrapped local metal right there. We want the same thing. We're gonna grab a piece of the riveted local metal, the flat green riveted local metal and place that behind there. Oh, whoops. We want our train casing to go right behind that. And we're gonna go ahead and place down underneath that train casing our train controls just like so grab ourselves a back seat place that down a set of copycat stairs is gonna go up like this and then we want a copycat layer just because it's a lot thinner We'll grab some coal for the texture. And there you go, you've got the coal bunker and everything. So we're starting to come together here. Uh, we want to place a... I feel like that's too much. One, two, three. Is that right? One, two, three. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So there we go. We want to do that. And we're gonna grab the copycat layer and just right behind the headstock, we're gonna extend that layer out one, like so. Oh, you know what? I apologize. That's gonna go out two. And that's just gonna kind of give us a little bit of a shape to Trevor here. And then we're gonna grab our copycat slice. And this copycat slice is just gonna come out free on either side, like so. And we're gonna grab a copycat bite. Just place that copycat bite kinda pretty much wherever you want, really. Um, I did it right there just because, I don't know, it seemed right. We'll grab the brass support, place that in. That kind of That's kind of like the steam whistle for Trevor, if you will. Now, bear in mind, you can't actually add a whistle to Trevor, unfortunately, but it's okay. We're going to also grab ourselves a fluid pipe with a bracket, like so a copycat step right there. The steel casing from the factory must grow. A copycat beam that we're gonna place right in the middle. A smokestack on top of that. A copycat shaft underneath that. Like that. 
a copycat fluid pipe underneath there with a bracket attached to it and then a copycat cogwheel on either side with some sort of black and some sort of red to create Trevor's front wheels. Once you have that basic shape down, we're going to gra grab the cast iron flywheels, place those cast iron flywheels, and Bob's your uncle, you are almost done. We're going to grab a kitchen hood pipe. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to place that kitchen hood pipe down. And off to the back of that, we're going to place a copycat board filled with that lime local metal. And then we're just going to wrap this board with slices all around sides here. And the reason we're doing that is because Trevor has like this Almost, I, don't, I don't know what it's called. Maybe it's a traction wheel. I don't know really what that is, but it's like a gold wrapped green wheel right there. And then to get the pipe to face in like that, the handcrafted mod has its own hammer. It's this big white hammer like that. Right click the pipe once and it bends it in to face that traction wheel, which is what I'm calling it. So there we go. That is your Trevor. Oh, and make sure you glue. That's right too. Make sure you glue your locomotives. I've done enough of these two these tutorials where I've just started to assume that you guys know that you glue the engines at the end. If you don't glue the engine at the end, this is what's gonna happen. You try to take it out of build mode and it's gonna say that you need to attach at least full, one forward facing train controls or are you missing super glue? So always make sure that you glue your contraptions at the end or your trains, whatever you wanna call them. Um, I don't always put that in the video because I assume that you guys know by now that you glue the locomotive when you're done. But yeah, there we go. We've made Boko and we've made Trevor the Traction Engine in today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, again, thank you all so much for being here and for all the support that you've given on the other videos. Um, and you know, please like, comment, share, subscribe all the stuff and things and uh, we will catch you next week um, for our next mystery character unveiling and so on this saturday will be the second episode in the rws series stay tuned for that as well i'm also almost done working out the kinks for a survival series and if you haven't been paying attention in the live streams then you might notice that uh Farquhar is missing Check out the live streams to find out why. And uh, yeah, you you might also be surprised that there's a an update on the map release. Stay tuned, guys. For now, you know what time it is. Okay, love you, bye.